one of the projects I worked on is was a, a nice 1920s George Washington Smith that the couple had just moved from Virginia and they were in the process of moving in, got evacuated during the the fire and then came back in for a couple weeks and they're like, oh, we really don't want to evacuate for this rainstorm. And they're just north of Oprah's property and they're like, fine, we'll evacuate again. We just want to like live in our house. And half the house got taken out by boulders. Welcome to Architecture, Design, and Photography. Today we have Gavin, I'm blanking on last name. Studer. Studer, that's right. Gavin Studer, who we actually just uh, met over the phone last week. And I only answered your call. I don't usually pick up calls because they're usually telemarketers. But your, uh, your caller ID came up as Oxnard, California, where we rent a house in February. And I was like, oh, I hope our house didn't burn down or something that we were supposed to rent. So I picked it up. And... It was you, and lo and behold, you're an architect uh, from Ventura, California, Correct. where we spend a lot of time uh, in the winter, who's actually moved out to Maine. And so that's pretty interesting to me, all the things around why someone would move from that area to here and why someone from here would run to there in the winter. And um, But yeah, similar backgrounds as far as design and geography and everything else. And so I thought it'd be interesting if we just sat down and shot the breeze about uh, what you're doing, what I'm doing, where we've lived and are living and going and all that. So thanks for coming by. Yeah, no problem. (laughs) Pleasure to be here. How are you doing? (sighs) Doing well. I'm about seven days into living in Maine. Really? Seven days in? Yep. I didn't know it was that soon. (laughs) This is yeah, interesting. Yeah, you were you were one of the first calls I made. You'll I, have to keep that close. You were one of the first calls that I made, so I, I, I definitely wanted to start um, networking, and I'd seen your work. Oh, cool. Um, and I know Thirty by Forty Workshop is. is okay, been, so you came across us through us working with Eric. Probably, yeah. He's okay. he's got quite the YouTube presence in in the oh, architectural yeah. realm. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah, he's he's an interesting guy. Uh, the way he the way he works and how he's figured out his different uh, kind of bases of income and everything else to yeah. allow him to work as a creative. Really cool. Yeah. Really inspiring it, for this this next generation of architects. Yeah. Have you gotten his books that, that he has I to I have not. Out? I, I got to save up for that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking about it. I probably will at one yeah, point. Yeah, no, I definitely recommend it. And uh, he, if, if you have time, go up and go up and see him if you can touch base with him. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's a really interesting guy. Um, he's got really good ideas. And, uh, oh, for sure. Very he's... similar to me, just couldn't take the working in someone else else's office thing yep. it's just as a personality trait maybe made a difficult employee or bad employee i made a bad employee maybe he was just more difficult when is within his yeah. own head of being an employee no, that definitely know. resonates with with me as a person so really yeah he i mean he he speaks to a lot of younger people mm-hmm. just you know the free the freedom that he kind of exudes in his sure. filmography and his process it right. just seems very almost happy-go-lucky I mean right. <laughs> like it's funny what interacting do, with what him what he's today. uh he's very um he's a very disciplined guy oh yeah yeah but still has that kind of um yeah. that outlook on like yeah this is possible you know mm-hmm. which is no, it's, which it's really it's cool. I, the idealistic part of it is is very inspiring right yeah so, so you grew up in California went to architecture school somewhere out there I'd imagine I I did I also started actually in uh, Arizona. I went to Arizona State University. Oh, okay. And I spent two years there. I I actually just applied online. It was like a a couple paragraphs. You fill out a form. I didn't look at any schools. I just kind of didn't really want to. So I was accepted because I think everyone gets accepted, or at least during that time period it was... Right. I think it went from around... When I went, it was like 30,000 plus people. And when I left, it was around 55,000 people oh, wow. attending. And I think it's one of the largest schools in the, on the planet. But I spent two years there. I started out in general business. And I, uh, I was walking next to a friend of mine in a class. And he was all dressed up with a tie and slacks, button-up shirt tucked in. And he was rolling a basswood model of 
like a modern mm -hmm. pavilion. Right. And I asked him, what degree is that? And he said, it's architecture. It's awesome. I, I spent all night working on this and designing this, and now I get to present it to a panel of judges, and they'll critique me on it. And I right. said, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know at the time what I wanted to do, but right. that, that sounded awesome so that, to me. That's interesting. Like, I, uh, I went into pre basically pre-med. I was thinking I was going to be a dentist and uh, did pre-med, and just I realized, like, I wasn't going to be able to hack it. Um, and a friend of mine was in architecture school and he was describing like the stuff he was doing like that. And I was just like, whoa, that, that sounds like fun. <laughs> and when I went into architecture school, it was like nothing I'd ever done in school before. Yeah. And just naturally it was like good at it. Now that, that was really nice. But then for me, the, uh, the school of architecture, very interesting, very creative and everything else the real world of it working in an office with all the minutia and the consistency of place and everything else wore on me a lot. And so that was, that was really hard to, to kind of deviate from that, especially for me going from, all right, I've got my master's and I've practiced for three years and I've got all this history and, you know, baggage that I brought with me to get here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just going to leave it, you know, and, and I basically did yeah. at that point, not knowing what I was going to do. Luckily, it's worked out for me well, but that was very, uh, it was very scary. But um, the, if you can do it right, like that's the encouragement I see through Eric Reinhold is that the, the way he's practicing architecture to me, if I stayed in architecture, I imagine I might have ended up doing something similar to that, I would think. I don't know. But where do you, where do you see yourself going? What do you enjoy in the process of architecture? Well, I mean, I've I've had varied experiences in architecture working for various employers, and um, I actually did get the the pleasure to work for myself for a few years. I worked for myself for um, three years full time. Yep. And so I had some good clients and some good projects for my age, 26, 27, 28 years of age. wasn't licensed, but I did some some big projects, and actually, <laughs> the last one I. I ended up doing that was almost permitted in uh, Bel Air, California. It was a guest house um, in uh, LA County. That ended up, the client added a, a third story at the very end of the project. And at that point, they needed and a stamp? A, and a third story. Really? So you can do one to two stories, no. no so it, it never really came up. I, I started, uh, I mentioned to the client, you know, we could have the civil or structural stamp these. Um, and I just, I don't have my stamp, so I, I was never planning on stamping it, but it turned out the builder quit anyway. Second round plan check. Hmm. Um, I never had contact directly with the owner. I think the owner's representative contacted me at one point, and I tried to help them. I got them all the plans, right. sent them down to L.A. County for printing and submittal, and I don't think, I don't know, maybe they submitted them. I don't, I don't think they did. I've heard California is really financially Per, you know, preventative, if that's the right word, on if you're doing new construction, whereas renovation is, is much more feasible because of just fees and stuff. Yeah, time, time after time, I hear stories about how people left a, a chimney or they left one wall in the right, house right, to, just to call it a renovation or a remodel. Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and that's, that's for permit, the permit process, the permitting fees, just to reduce the timeline, reduce the cost. Hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. you still basically get a 99.9% .9 new build. Right. Right. So you're, so you're, are you practicing in California still while being in Maine? Correct. So it's kind of that day after day, same spot type of thing. I, I'm working remote for the firm that I've been working for for the mm. past three years. How's that going? So far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> I would, uh, I would. I would think working remote could have some real issues, but it's uh, enough technology to, to solve all of that. Yeah, good internet connection and, um, you know, video conferencing or screen sharing mm -hmm. is a big part of it. And uh, my employer currently has two other guys who are remote, one in Santa Cruz, California, and one in Portland, Oregon. Huh. And it, it does definitely limit your ability to be more of a project architect or manager in terms of site visits right or creating as a long flight yeah for that for me 
it's closer for those other two guys, but I, I somehow ended up on the opposite corner right. of the map. Right. But uh, so seven weeks in, what do you what do you think of Maine so far? Seven days in. Seven days in. Sorry. I like it a lot. Yeah. I'm actually pleasantly. I'm not pleasantly surprised. I, I've always heard good things about Maine, and Maine is, is kind of almost like a has a mystique about it. It's just like a lot of wilderness and a lot of coastline and not a lot of people. So there's kind of just an unknown, unknown that comes with that. It's a nice place. I actually got to, got to get out surfing a little bit this morning. In these nice conditions. It was nice. Sun up and offshore wind and. Not, I think there's like two other people out, so. Perfect. Yeah, and in Ventura, you're just not going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and but that, it'll be that, warmer. That's, that's one of the reasons why I didn't really surf a lot was it's just kind of a line. You've got a line up. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. A lot of people have to fight over things. and. <sighs> I guess yeah. I don't like waiting or something. <laughs> 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 waiting my turn. All right. It's fine. I, I, I actually kind of felt... A small amount of guilt for when people asked me if I surf and I said well not really I kind of <laughs> felt bad I felt like I should especially living so close I was about a mile from C Street oh wow and uh, I, I would surf fair weather just in board shorts right right I found actually when I've been out there that I'm I surf C Street less and less just because it's so crowded and I'll go okay. down towards the harbor or or Silver Pier Strand Pond area yeah, so Silver Strand's a big one. Probably gets busy though when the swells. Well, the yeah, Silver a, Strand, they swell. just get really angry if you're not from there. That's a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> locals only, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, no, I I love California. I, uh, but I'm I'm also, I'm also not looking back. It's it's kind of a thing that I've done over and over. Yeah. Just. So did you I grow up in Ventura? Or? Yep, born and raised in Ventura. Oh, wow. And went to school, like I said, in Arizona for two years. Absolutely hated it. And Arizona? Yep. Mm -hmm. Why Phoenix. was that? Just the city is, is I, you know, when I was single, I, I didn't have any issues with living in a city, like a, mm -hmm. a large city, but it just didn't felt, it didn't feel like a city. It was just flat, one story development right. with six lane roads gridded and through the, it was a grid. It's a grid and it's flat and it's, hot and kind of relentless like you could you know I had a friend that same friend that I had met and he was kind of the one that got me started on the architecture path he he lived in Gilbert and I lived in um, central Phoenix and it was about a 45 minute drive each way mm -hmm. at 70 miles per hour the whole way just huge open nicely paved freeways but it was how do you feel about the uh, town structures here in New England it's it's amazing. I can't believe the the CVS and the the DMV are such beautiful little right? quaint <laughs> buildings. Like it's the, so different. Yeah, so different. the um the uh, the same reaction when I was in architecture school in Michigan. A friend of mine, Caleb, that came out here. He and his wife moved out here, and uh, they were like like even the Taco Bells in this like. Yeah. Quaint little, you know. My wife just mentioned to me we were driving yesterday that that McDonald's is cute. Right. We must must have been going by the Freeport McDonald's. <laughs> it, it was Kennebunk. Kennebunk, right, um, right. We actually got to go for a hike yesterday on one of the loops down in the Rachel Carson. Oh, yeah. Preserve. That's a super nice area. Super, Good mountain super biking awesome. Stuff too. There's mountain biking in there? Oh, yeah. You can. In, on the uh, coast? Let's see. Smith Preserve, which yeah. I think is part of. I got to do Rachel that. Carson. Yeah. It's really I'm looking nice. Looking forward to that in the, east, in the East Coast Greenway there. The yeah. The, Eastern now the, Trail. Eastern the Trail. difference with mountain biking out here is that you're going to run into roots nonstop. So it's a lot more like. Bah, 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 yeah. And so you have to get like the suspension or a um, fat tire bike, which kind of just kind of yeah. makes them all kind of marshmallow out, I which gotta, is nice. I got to so. check out the fat bike thing. I have yeah. a gravel bike like a monster cross bike it's called it's mm. just a road bike with up to two oh, inch width. okay now have you been up to portland much i w i've only been to new england in the winter and one of the winters that i came to visit my brother-in-law in york um we took a, a, an afternoon trip to portland yeah and we just went to the old port i think it's called yeah 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 it's interesting the uh like bitterford here is so much nicer than it was even 15 years ago 
and supposedly the old port used to be just this horrendous like run down neglected scary place and now it's all just like you know really quaint mom and pop you know and hip shops yeah. and stuff and super nice area so it's it's neat to see each one of these towns finding its new life after losing, uh, you know, the, the initial industries that caused them. So I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity for architecture in, in that realm. Yeah. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how, how that, that stuff excites out. me. I mean, I remember watching it happen in Portland, in Portland, Oregon. Oh, yeah. A lot of the revitalization of um, the brick buildings. Re rehabbing them as facades and then building those those dense apartments, hmm. and I think that was San Francisco as well. Yeah, uh, geez, just San Francisco. But they they only really kept the facade just because it was a concrete podium with right. with uh, high density mid rises or high rises. Well, mid rises I think, and uh, that stuff was always fun to me. But L A and San San Diego, where I finished out my schooling in downtown San Diego, it never never had old enough structures to kind of now, the gas kind of lamp stuff. district kind of does, doesn't it? Gas lamp. In gas the, lamp it has that feel with the brick. I don't yeah. I don't know how much of that is actually truly original, but I guess it is Fair the old, point, oldest yeah. downtown part of downtown San Diego. There's so okay. many districts. Like, there's Horton Plaza in Gas Lamp, and then um, East Village is where I went to school. And when I went to school there, it was – it just got the light rail – going through there and yep. then Petco Park had been finished by um, Antoine Predock. He designed that, which is an amazing stadium. It's it's great. And so that whole East Village area was just coming online. It was going from crack houses to hmm. to art district. Right. And then right. and now it's spreading even more east. The it's just downtown San Diego. From this the time I arrived there in two thousand eight and then I left in two thousand ten, just going to the beaches I went to Wind and Sea Beach in La Jolla a lot and skimboarded there. And it was almost empty the first um, summer I went there. And then by the last summer, it was mm. just packed. It was just growing and growing and growing. Yeah. I mean, San Diego is we have a, a big place. job coming up in La Jolla mm -hmm. in December. It'll be a nice time to be in La Jolla. So. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> um, Wind and Sea Beach is awesome. So you're early 30s? How do you think the the do you think there'll be a generational difference in how people practice architecture? Um, is there is do you get a feeling of of a generational difference that might potentially change like the whole van life people realizing earlier that living like you're pseudo retired is a nicer way to live your entire life rather than work your butt off and then retire when you have like a couple of years left. Do you, do you think there'll be some type of different way that architecture is practiced, uh, that that'll start to become much more sole proprietors or what do you think? You, you see anything I, there? I know the licensure process, at least in California, well, and the national testing is is pretty, it cuts out a lot of people in the same way that architecture school cut out people. I mean, right. I remember after my first classes in uh, my, sec my third year, there were still people dropping out. And then by my fifth year, there's people dropping out during the fifth year studio. Mm -hmm. And then just, Statistically, you can you can read the statistics on the NCARB website about how many people go on to get licensed. Right. Um, I think there is a little bit more knowledge about what you know what what you actually need to do to get licensed and how much you could actually do on your own without a license. Right. Uh, but that's that's a pretty big decision to make pretty early on in right. your in your late twenties about whether or not you want to get licensed. And if you don't get licensed, at least in California. You, you're restricted to, um, I think it's like maybe 5,000 square foot, two story plus a basement home. Hmm. I mean, that's a lot of, that, that gives that's you a lot of work. Still. That gives you work. Yeah. Um, but it's al also just this very small amount of work. I'm amazed compared that to all uh, of architecture. I mean, even with two story structures being in such a high earthquake zone that they'd still allow things to be built without an architect. It amazes me. Uh, typically, just the civil or structural would stamp that. Really? Okay, so you have if to have the if the it's a, it comes down to the plan checker's discre discretion, hmm. and so 
one of the last projects I worked on was a commercial project that I actually got to stamp, which was exciting. Hmm. And the the owners of this brewery in Carpinteria had done the drawings. He went to architecture school, one of the owners, and he was about to get a permit, and then they switched the plan checker on him. And that plan <laughs> checker was like, you need to have a licensed professional draw these plans. Right. And then uh, same with mechanical, electrical, plumbing. And then so I learned that you don't actually need all of those engineers to stamp the drawings. We were able to get a, a specialty, just basically a, a licensed plumbing contractor to stamp the plumbing as the, the plumbing plans that I drew. Hmm. Um, so it's just so much of it is you just you just learn by doing. And so right. when I worked for myself, that was a huge jump from drafting bathrooms and importing DWGs and cleaning up consultants drawings to when I got my next job, which is my current position, actually showing that I, I'm able to take a, a plan set all the way through this right. incredibly long and circuitous process that now is about three to five years for a custom home. Right. Ay, At ay, least ay. in the, you know, in the Santa Barbara County, Santa Barbara, uh, Montecito right. districts of, of, of the coastline there's just so many so much red tape right there's the california coastal commission there's planning commissions there's architectural review boards right like the one of the they i did a a modern home renovation it was it was about a, a 1.2 million dollar remodel of a, of a beach house and that that was two architectural review boards it was a santa barbara county review board and then the summerland community neighborhood design review committee hmm. and they both had five to eight licensed professionals and i think they have one neighborhood citizen member as part of the committee and so i had to go to both of those back to back to back to back about four times each right so it was about eight meetings what to kind review of the design what kind of reviews did they have for you i remember one architect it's a very it's just modern it's black I cut off the eaves. It's standing seam roof, black yep. standing seam. I think I siding. saw that on your website. Yeah, and one of the architects was like, you know, I think we sh you should explore doing a kind of an oval balcony off of, you know, part of this. It's a long balcony, just cable railing. It's just very straight. It's just very rectilineal, very modern, um, very Californian. And it was just, I, I had to tell him, yeah, yeah, we'll look into that, you know. <laughs> maybe we want to do like a, a half-rounded balcony. Maybe we won't, but thanks for your thought. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to be cordial and friendly, and you have to yeah. smile a lot and just try to not take it personally. Like my client came to one of the final meetings where we were discussing between dark charcoal and straight black siding in a right. community where they they basically say you can do like a, a light yellow or a cream. Those are the, the neighborhood right. colors. Right. It, they tried to have standards. And... Uh, they said no. The community board said no. We're definitely not doing a black house. But I had to ask the Santa Barbara County Board, you know, do you guys make the final say? And they said yes. And the client was there, and they, they were, like, standing up and saying, no, we want to do black. We love this color. We love this house. And uh, we went outside into the sun and looked at all the, the colors, and they chose. They were like, I guess this one's okay, like a dark charcoal that was a little bit lighter than the dark. Right. We ended up just doing the, the darkest black, which is what they wanted. <laughs> Basically like a jet uh, black. Right, right. Oh, man. All that red tape, that would drive me nuts. It was... I loved it. I mean, that's what I kind of love huh. about it. It's just the challenge. I yeah, can't believe it. It's that challenging to do a remodel. <laughs> right. Well, that's California. But that was just one example. That was... It took about two years to do all the permitting. Hmm. Through, uh, from design through permitting. And have you sat for your boards and gotten those, or is that still ahead of you? No, I, I got my California license oh, okay. last year. Now, is there reciprocity the from California to Maine at all? or? Uh, in Maine, it's about three pages of um, experience you have to fill out if you don't have uh, the NCARB certificate, which mm -hmm. is, I, th I think it's a 1000 bucks. You could pay NCARB to send your transcripts and yep. experience to Maine, or you can fill out the oh. paperwork and pay $140 to Maine. So it's a $860 couple of days of filling out paper. Basically. Yeah. And in Maine, there's no continuing education and, um, 
you don't ever have to renew it. Hmm. So in California, you have to renew every two years. Yep. And you have to um, do, or you have to renew every two or three years. I forget now already, but I had to renew it a few months after I got it. So I had to do five or, I think you have to do five or six hours of continuing education, which is typically accessibility or universal oh, design right, based, right. Hmm. like reading. So do you think you'll be looking to hang your own shingle here in Maine, or do you think you'll be looking to be employed somewhere here in Maine or stay working remotely? Don't know. <laughs> well, I'm open to all things. Yeah. Um, I'm just excited to meet new people and start networking and explore the area, explore the nature hmm. that, that's here, and who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Now, talk to me about the uh, the things that drove you out of California to actually consider living somewhere else rather than where you were where you were raised. Well, like I said, I loved I loved it there, and I love it. I there. didn't want to go. I'm not from I there. I didn't want to leave. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's it. I think everyone can agree the weather is phenomenal. Um, the fire weather, on on the other hand, was getting a little out of hand. We were while we were packing, it was raining ash oh, yet geez. again after. I think last year we were evacuated because really? we were up in the hillsides during the T Thomas fire, fire mm. and I had been evacuated twice growing up from that same same really? home. I was renting my parents' house for the last seven years. Um, but the thing that drove me out was there was just no there was no way that we were going to be able to afford a home on my my single income. Right. Hmm. My wife is stay at home homeschooling mom. So yeah. At least oh, and you now. have kids? Two, two little ones. Two oh, little boys. how old? Five and a half and three and a half. Oh, man, you're not far behind me. I Finn and Kip. Finn and Kip. I have, I have Simon and Grace and eight and ten. That's yeah, I'll be there in a few yeah, days, basically, it feels like. Yeah, It's going no, it faster does. and faster. Oh, that's cool, though, to, to make the decision to, to Oof, stay yeah. home. That's, that's a, a hard one, but a, a good one, for sure, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, they're... They're going to get all their ideas equal, equal ear and hopefully <laughs> a lot of form making yeah. early on. Nice. I hope we have a good workshop for them. Yeah. I did some woodworking um, for a couple of years, build a few pieces for yeah. a few clients, fl mostly oh, cool. floating shelves and coffee tables. Yep. And I built our dining table, which didn't fit in the U-Haul, unfortunately. So uh. that's still back at the house. Maybe I'll sell it on Craigslist remotely, but... Um, I also did some metalworking, which was funny. This, I think it was on Facebook when I was back on Facebook. A chef, did you know Dinner in a Movie? I've heard that of that. TV show. The yeah. chef from that TV show lives in Ojai, which is where, yeah. just near where, uh, that's where I was working, and that's where I went to my last year of high school. And he contacted me uh, through Facebook because he saw that I had been making some furniture. And he contacted me about creating a, an outdoor prep kitchen oh, sink cool. table and uh, because he was working in uh, the garden um, there was like a movement for school gardens and mm -hmm. using that food in the kitchens of the, and creating a, a menu for these public schools oh cool there's apparently funding for it and so i spent a couple years i think it was about 200 hours in my garage using um, stainless st steel panels aluminum angle and pop riveting it all together to make an outdoor kitchen. Oh, wow. That uh, I completed two prototypes um, and we made an Indiegogo campaign and um, it, ed it ended up just kind of fizzling. Mm. I think the product, uh, it was kind of a Swiss army knife. I think it did too many things. It, was, right. it wasn't good at one thing. It, it, it had a decent sink, an RV sink, a Dometic sink. It had a Snow Peak burner called the Baja burner built into the right. table. The table flipped up. It had a cabinet for storage. Oh. It was all stainless steel or aluminum, outdoor, weatherproof. Was this like a mobile thing or was it yeah, meant it was, to? Yeah, it was meant to be mobile. It was meant to go in the back of a car or truck. Um, but it just, it had a cutting table, a cutting board as well. It right. had all sorts of stuff. It was pretty cool. So but I keep thinking there's a, a market like, okay, so here, you know, you moving all the way across the country uh, because b essentially housing and everything was unaffordable in a place where you grew up, which was, is kind of a sad thing that anyone... My parents didn't want to give me their house. Ah, <laughs> jeez. There's an easy way to fix that. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but it, to me, I mean, my wife and I looked at a long time, like, all right, maybe we can build our own, like with our own hands and stuff. And you look at the time involved and everything. And, but it seems like there's a, a business opportunity somewhere in there too, because the most difficult and money intensive parts of houses are the bathroom and kitchen, right? Cause there's just so much going on there. If you could somehow make a prepackaged thing, like here's your bathroom and here's your kitchen mm -hmm. that's built like in a 10 by 10 shipping container, like part of it's the uh, bathroom that's in the 10 by 10 maybe mm -hmm. with a little bit of closet and then the kitchen's on the outside, right? And you have this thing that you can just ship Drop and ship. put in place. Like you just need four walls and a roof and then that and you're square one, you have a roof, you're, you know, over your head. It's basically and even all your utilities a, in all your, it's your infrastructure. Yeah, all of that right there that and do the, uh, like we have a, an electric heat pump outdoor. I mean, yep. you could have everything on in on that one thing, ship to site, drop down the foundation for that bit. Well, have you seen on Amazon, there's a new movement towards these they're basically tiny homes that are being completely designed and built and flat pack shipped from China. And from they're like, China. you go scary. on amazon.com search house. Yeah. And it's like 10, 15 grand. Really? And this is a new thing. And, and this you, is for like you ADUs just assemble and it yourself. stuff because ADUs are such a, what are ADUs? California passed a, a law, um, allowing, certain size lots to build a, an additional dwelling unit because of the housing oh, crisis. Oh, right, right, right. So it's a second a second dwelling unit. And Ooh, these I'm little... I'm one of these. But the I think the quality, quality control is. and... But there's several companies, I think, vying vying to, to kind of become... They're, they have weird names. You right. Know, they're all from... Um, they, didn't, they didn't bother to westernize their names. Yeah, they, they don't have... Th yeah, it's not like... Americanized yet. It's mm -hmm. basically they 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 sell these things and they purport like, you know, you add on solar panels for this much. Right. You right. add a kitchen for this much and it some of them look like shipping con containers. Right. I haven't done a ton of research into them, but I'm I'm actually interested in the concept of just cuz it's so much cheaper to make them there, you know. Yeah, if, if you could get it made container. their quality, if you could get the quality control in her. Like control. if you could design it into a 10 by 10 shipping container because they make the or mm -hmm. the 8 by 10 on only 10 foot long one get like your heating air conditioning kitchen bathroom all in there somehow right to where maybe your kitchen's on the outside or something but then you can ship that as is like mm -hmm. you, there's all these cost things that you're putting into one thing and then it's delivered to site and then all you're worrying for on site is, you know, bedrooms and hearing that in and yeah, like really not even that just big open space, you know, starting yeah, just out, to, just make a big vaulted gable. Oh, no vaulted gables, shed roof, just shed roof, windows. And sure. <laughs> what, I mean, that's the thing. It's they, they're all a hundred square foot or less because right. that's, that's basically, I think 99 square feet and less is no permit is needed. Yeah. There you go. But that's very small for an additional home because technically yeah, that's super small. You could do much larger than that and still be within the ADU right. code. Hmm. Um, so anyway, I don't know how big you can I mean that's a pretty big thing to be shipping is a hundred square foot. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyway, that's 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 here. I just don't know who to buy from. <laughs> <laughs> And if someone wants to, yeah. you know, sponsor us to buy one and investigate right. and review, do a review, we could do a review of the right. quality the and the architectural <laughs> styling. I have a, a lot right over here that's like, I think it's 60 by 60 that I got a long time ago just because I was, as I was transitioning during and out of architecture, practicing architecture, I was kind of thinking uh, along the lines of property development as well. So I could be a little more my own boss. And uh, I would just scour the uh, city for weird buildable lots. Mm -hmm. And I found one over here, and but still haven't built on it. And that was probably 10, 15 years ago. Easy. Um, but I keep thinking of doing like a shipping container tower or something there because it's very industrial area. And it would be really cool to just do like 40 by 40, but just kind of link and log them and infill with glass, you know, and do like yeah. five stories. But yeah, I think, money. I think the shipping container thing has had a, 
a decent run. I know in the the experience I've had just hearing about it or seeing it happen, California's definitely experimented with it. Right. I've seen architects experiment with it. I almost got hired for a full-time job just to build out a wood shop and metal shop mm -hmm. in a shipping container that would then be the workshop to build out the rest of the shipping containers on the site for an architect's office. Oh, cool. Never, never came to fruition on a lot in Santa Barbara. The thing I found is they work well for forming space, but the spaces they create within themselves are really tight. So they, the, you could maybe do a bedroom, office, bathroom, mm -hmm. but beyond that, it's like it's pretty no, unpleasant. Yeah, no living rooms, no great rooms. I mean, yeah. The other thing is, I think m money wise, it's about the same as stick framing. If you were to just yeah, that's stick discouraging. Build something because you, as soon as you cut a hole in a shipping container, it compromises the structural wall. Yeah, and then you then have to build a steel framed wall around right. that window before installing a window if you were to stack them i right. mean either way you need a frame to mount the window to because it's a right it's a zigzaggy wall i have um, i i finally got one as our immediate garage for the house that we built we could afford to do the house but didn't oh yeah. have a garage so i was like who am gonna get a shipping container so my idea is to build it into eventually just like a barn and have it as one side of the barn essentially mm -hmm. um shed roof uh no <laughs> we have to do a, a gable i believe um yeah, my yeah. wife wants to put solar panels on it which i could still do a shed roof and put solar panels on i know but the to match the form of the house we already have and the added space up there for potentially like a guest a room or something or yeah. yeah fully usable space yeah yeah so we'll see exciting i just need a we just need a barn space or something. We have like so much stuff just sitting outside right now. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, our kids' bikes and oh, yeah. a tractor and like just all this stuff that would be nice to not have rain and snow all over all the time. It's so crazy. It's so different than California here. Oh, yeah. It's uh, no one has a tractor. <laughs> no one has a barn. Right. Like you have to be a, a millionaire, a right. multi, multi millionaire to have a barn. That's funny. Uh, yeah. It's not like a, a, a thing. It's like, it's not like you inherited a farm or anything like that. It's like, if you have a farm in California, you are like a, living a out rich, on the ranch. Person. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I mean, it's like the height of just California farm, you know, right. it's like a big style out there. The yeah. I mean, we, style. we were able to get like 14 acres under a mile from the coast for a song, essentially. I mean, it came with a lot of, lot of red tape of how to get access to the lot oh, and everything. But, yeah. you know, you just uh, have to ask. Yeah, I mean, my wife figured it out and oh, wow. got it done. Yeah, it's funny. Like, I'm the one with the architecture <laughs> degree and everything else, but she's the one with the like people skills. So, oh, yeah. she made it happen. Um, good, good team. She'd be, she'd kind of be like, we're, we're at this crossroads and we can't do it because of that. And so then I'd be like, well, we could do this, that, and the other, but if I try and get anyone to do this, they'll just stop me immediately because I'm not likable. So why don't you do it? You're the nice <laughs> You're person. You're likable, Trent. Uh, maybe in this like format, you. but not in like, if I'm going to your you get bureaucratic office of whatever, and I, I, I don't know. But there's something so cute. I mean, there's, you know, wood siding and it's beautiful colors. Uh, <laughs> in California, going to the bureaucratic office is like, we're talking like super old buildings that just have terrible way wayfinding, no parking. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's... it's. Now, I got to say that Town Hall or whatever in uh, Ventura... Yeah, it's there, known for that. super nice. The City Hall is known for yeah. being beautiful there. Yeah, we, my boys and I just took a... We hiked from where we were staying in the Pierpont area up through Ventura, like went lengthwise through that building just because I wanted to see it. And then we went up to Grant Park and then back down. Was did you cool. do the botanical gardens? We did. We went through the botanical gardens. I think they were closed that day, but we still went through. So good. <laughs> there was like it people used to be free last year, but after the fire, they, they built all the shipping containers. Oh uh, yeah. We saw put, a couple shipping a containers. Yeah. Yeah. But there was like people working there and just like, ah, oh, yeah, you can come through right now. Don't worry about it. Oh, great. Hmm. That's good. Okay. I'm glad to <laughs> Well, they were nice. Yeah. But. So, 
architect in Maine. Wife is staying home with the kids. Correct. Where are you? Li- you're in Wells or Wells York? right now. Wells mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm assuming renting and yeah, renting just until April and then it yeah. turns back into a summer rental. Oh, so you you got a seasonal expensive for right, us. Right. Uh, so so I don't what, know. I gotta find something. Yeah. I gotta find a place. Yeah. Now is a bad time to buy, though. Unfortunately. In general, yes. Yeah. In like in general, I mean, at the any housing point market is crazy. In the United States, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and probably the, we sold places. our house not that long ago. And even since then it's gained probably 40 grand in, in equity. And so, okay. It's crazy. Good to know. But, yeah. um, it, everyone we've talked to has been like, it's so expensive here now. Yeah. Well, I mean, we moved here it's in like true. 2003 and I remember being in architecture school, going online and looking at what was available for places. And it was weird. Cause I, we moved here and then I was like, Hey, I've seen that. And I've seen that. Yeah. It was like kind of seeing celebrities or something. It was weird, but <laughs> you've been following them. Yeah. I'd online. been following them online. And, but I started looking into like the property values at the town hall once we moved here. And I saw like in the late nineties, houses were going for like 80 grand that at the point when we were looking in by like 2004 and five, like they were, they were almost tripled in value. Mm-hmm. And I was like, geez, just like six years ago, you could have put your money in and just, and then of course, 2005 to eight, it just kind of, yeah, but it was, it was interesting to see that, um, that cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. luckily we got into a house that, that we didn't lose our shirts on or anything. And I ended up like tearing every single wall <laughs> out of the thing being a typical architect. So, yeah. well, it, especially if you get an older an old, one of these older, older homes. It's it was like a early 1900s. Yeah, probably. exactly. Yeah. You kind of just have it had to. like every room was you cordoned off. To. Like every single room had <laughs> doors. So like, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, and old apparently they don't have like insulation. So if you can add insulation, ours did not have insulation. Yes, and we had like the original windows when we moved in too. Yep. So in, pane. in the winter, like the the windows would just kind of shutter, and you you just put your hand over near there, and you just feel a breeze. <laughs> it was it was so bad, and they had in the living room, they had these magnetic uh, windows that you'd put in over them. Oh they, yeah. They there was like... a big magnetic strip around it and you had these plastic with like little on the side, it was like a little accordion. Mm-hmm. And so you'd set it on the sill and then it would go, park, you know, yeah, and stick in. to the window. So during the winter, when there'd be like a nor'easter, you'd see the, uh, the, these plastic added things they'd suck in and like the reflection would oh, the go weird. Pressure. Yeah. And then it would like go the other way. And, <laughs> Yeah. So do you know what a nor'easter is? I've heard the term. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, yeah. So a nor'easter. A yeah. The, so down east uh, is not is neither down nor really east. It's like you'd have to travel northeast really from here to get to uh, like the magazine down east. is called. Right. There's a magazine called down. But east. it's a sailing term. Like you're going downwind. You would sail down east to get to that area, I guess okay. I, I might be butchering it because I didn't grow up here either, but <laughs> that's that like a nor'easter is basically the wind will howl northeast in a, in a typical storm here, the way storms spin, you just end up getting wind from the northeast okay. and that's why they call it a nor'easter. Um, and they're really fun because you'll just have like raging storm. Like you really don't get in California. I mean, just intense raging uh, storm and then the next day the wind will go northwest and it just clears out and it's just crystal blue skies Perfect. and everything covered in snow and it's Ooh. it's just like super beautiful and to go to the Wonderland. coast in that situation where there's like snow going right down to the water and then this bright blue sky and all this sun and can't wait it's really cool it uh it's a it's a different different deal for sure and like uh, you know to go to school in the midwest where i was at like a sheet of gray would just move in in november and not go away till like may yeah and that was that was bad but here you have these really intense like few days of storm and then you know these intense days of bright okay that's really yeah nice. i mean so far the wind like 8 to 9 p.m the wind just howls like, yeah that's pretty interesting that even in itself that's more weather 
Right. Like we would every few years you get intense downpours, like a semi tropical storm mm-hmm. will come in and then we'll get our firestorms where a fire will yeah. rage. For so a few you were days, you were in Ventura not this winter but the last winter where like in February there were it like rained solid for a week. Yeah, it'll do that. It'll Holy be cow. And it was like weird. that landslide in Montecito. Yeah. It was and then Lock and Cheetah, obviously, years yep. and years ago. Which yeah, it's that, always interesting to me. Ten people died in Lock and Cheetah in the landslide and it's still covered. But then Montecito, you know. Right. People die and it's like this crazy operation for months and months where they're every single caterpillar machine is digging out every single home and right um i'm glad i'm glad that they did that but it's just like it's don't forget lock and cheetah right it's like it always spooked me on the on the i think north side of grant park those houses on that part of ventura around going up to ojai mm-hmm. they go like right up to that hillside and there's part of the hillside where you can see it's almost like Oh, off the avenue. Yeah, I had yeah. a buddy who was looking at a house there. And it's just like you like, look nope, at that hill and you're like, buy a house there. it's just like wanting to just come down on you. Yeah, one of the geotechnical guys I've worked with at my current firm, he, he's he been called by the committee, the neighborhood committee there down below that creeping hillside to go up and investigate and take some samples or something. And the mm. owner of the land is like, nope, don't don't touch it. I'm Why? not going to do I'm not doing anything like cuz he's then he's going to be liable you yeah, think. Yeah, cuz then ah, he has to like geez, that's weird. do something about it probably. But I don't know. I mean, there's definitely at least 10 or 20 homes at risk right there. Oh yeah, easy. <laughs> Every time it's I'm crazy. over on that side of the city and I look over there I'm like it's just Ooh. all sand. You yeah, know, it's, it's just, just gonna, like sandy. It's eventually just going to let yeah. go and <laughs> Well, like the whole coastline if you drive from Ventura to Montecito or yeah, it's just the whole it's just that whole area. The whole thing is just falling always. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not weird that it's falling next to houses too. So, it's just something. It's 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 a bummer when people move there and they don't know that though. Like, one of the projects I worked on is it was a a nice 1920s George Washington Smith that the couple had just moved from Virginia and hmm. they were in the process of moving in got evacuated during the the fire and then came back in for a couple of weeks and they're like, oh, we really don't want to evacuate for this rainstorm. And they're just north of Oprah's property and they're like, fine, we'll evacuate again. We just want to like live in our house. And right. half the house got taken out by boulders. Their, their master bedroom was a floor and a roof sticking out like cantilever oh, wall. No. It was gone. Like Jeez. their bed was gone. Yeah, we, uh, found again. we went up there right after that and saw it was just like the roads were it just looked like a it was insane a huge gutter you know but that happened back in the early 1900s and that's why um they built the i think one of the reasons they built like olive street the overpass there was was supposed to be it was a river and then they they decided to make it a bridge over the freeway. And so when it did flood, that whole p- portion of the freeway right there at Montecito became a big lake. Ooh. <laughs> and it's just, and that's, so that's why, like, when you look at L.A. River, like in Terminator or something like that, it's like, that's so ugly. Right. But it's, well, that's designed for the 100 or 500 year storm. Right, and right. And they don't want people living there and they don't want it to overflow and take out houses. Like. Yeah, it's, to me, it's always so weird. Like, you you drive by rivers and the in the east and it's like it's a river yeah it's you drive by currently a river yeah you drive by rivers in california and it's like like two feet wide two feet and this wide. massive concrete basin it's like what what is that yep it's <laughs> what planning for the future so how do you when you how do you tell people directions for roads now that you're on the east coast and how do you refer to california now that you're on the east coast <sighs> directions for roads like, because everyone in California says you take the, the ten or the thing. That, no one. I have no issue taking that. the 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 off. Yeah, I think it, it so, makes more sense. So you get on ninety five and go up the to Portland, PCH, which right. doesn't make sense. The one hundred one. That's it. Technically, is just one hundred one. Right. You, it's a it's, it's a thing. So, but, so when you when you refer to California, do you say back west, 
now that you've come because you, that's technically for you it's back west instead I of everyone saying this back is the first east. conversation i've had about california it's it's interesting because like uh my friend that lives out there now he lives in the inland empire and in ventura okay so he right. he has a boat in the harbor in ventura oh, great. yeah and then he's he has it's like a little two vacation thousand. spot yeah it's his get out of the ie and be oh, on the man, beach inland empire <laughs> that is it's funny he loves it because like he he place. um <laughs> he does he's a photographer he doesn't have like a nine to five okay so he's always out oh, there hiking fine. the hills and yeah, stuff if and you it's, can take it's advantage really beautiful. of the mountains there's yeah. huge mountains in california everywhere yeah it's it's a beautiful place but then it is like just a sea of strip mall stuff and all that too but he's always talking and you t talk to people there and they say oh yeah back east and then it's out out west out and back west. east that's okay. that's how they refer to them and so well, to me it's interesting like i i want you to use back west back west and see if, yeah because back you're west. from the west back <laughs> west now i'm, I'm gonna see back if i west. can start a thing like you can <laughs> back east sounds smoother but it does i can it say might, that might be the contributor to why I, people actually say that my theory is that people say back east because it's just the natural migration of how the you know the settlement it started by westerners out back east and yeah then so it went out to the west like yeah. we went out to the west like right so it was a challenge i think to come out west <laughs> yeah you it you'd still lose is a, a challenge to make the trip back and forth i mean not not lose a couple family members challenge no but. we didn't yeah we didn't have to leave behind some right horses or something like leave, that leave mom on the on the hillside she wasn't gonna make it so <laughs> yeah. so you're working over here at the co-work space in um in Biddeford here I just wanted to check it out yep. I probably will take advantage a how do those work I don't know I just be. toured it with Mark Feldman yeah um, he's a nice guy and he runs it and apparently in 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 uh coordination with the main one in Portland mm -hmm. yeah how do they work? You just pay a fee for either a, f a floating desk, which is a, you just grab one and it's it comes with like a screen that you can plug into and a yep. kind of a standing. And you're just kind of there for the day. And you mm -hmm. can you can utilize their little kitchenette, hmm. their kitchen. You can yep. utilize their printer, their conference room, a certain amount of time per month or something. And then, right. then they have fixed desks and then they have enclosed office spaces. Hmm. How, how do you full. find that? just online i just searched for co no, i mean but like how do you how do you like it oh i i liked it yeah. and just and seeing what, other like people working around me is motivating <laughs> like oh they're working you to work. i should work i should probably work <laughs> yeah, yeah it was it, it was good it, i think i also like just that a, a lot of them seem to be just pretty minimal in the design yeah it's a little bit more modern it's not hmm. it's pretty clean minimal space so kind of works with architecture the other the the main thing is there's no l desks typically i have a computer and then i turn right and i have the drafting space sure so i'm sure they'll accommodate <laughs> so what do you what have you found to be the the alarming or notable design differences between living in in the west and and moving out here to maine to new england just aside from the cvs's <laughs> well the cvs's are based on the, the old farmhouses and the capes and the colonials i mean the siding alone is just a huge fresh view of i mean we we use siding back west but <laughs> yes i guess it's just the the housing developments i think are the the biggest shock is just out <laughs> in california <laughs> back west there it's just stucco you know it's painted stucco yeah and it's modern to do Drive like it. the smooth coat stucco called plaster. Yeah. But out here, there's none of that. And so it's just a lot prettier to have those shadow lines and to have the horizontal or vertical right. wood right. siding. Sometimes it's metal, I'm sure. But the other thing is just the developments, at least here in the southern coast, is, is they kind of carve a street out into the woods and they dead end it one way or both ways. Mm -hmm. And they build a house on a half acre or an acre and a half around these two spokes. Right. And you can't see it from the road. And when you go down it, it's like the most perfect, pleasant, 
double dead end <laughs> road in the woods of right. like houses and all the houses are really well maintained and it's it doesn't seem like there's a bad neighborhood and it, it kind of feels like all of Maine is just this enclave of <laughs> forested <laughs> develop like small mini right. so broad acre style development you know kind what's of like your feelings of like the this more in town area of Biddeford and stuff this is the only the second time I've been here oh, yeah. um, it's fine I it's so crazy to me that it's only 20,000 people hmm. in these I guess there's 20,000 here and 20,000 in Saco yep um, 40,000 people. That's still way smaller than Ventura. Yeah, <laughs> just by Ventura a little bit. Ventura is 125,000. And it doesn't really feel like it because it's so squeezed right there at the avenue and Main right. Street. Right. It's like this bow tie. It's only a, like a one-sided bow tie. Mm-hmm. Or it's like a 90-degree bow tie where it just spreads out east, southeast, down towards Camarillo. Right. And then up towards Ojai, there's the avenue development. But, uh, I mean, all the all the neighborhoods are just tracks. Every neighborhood is a tract, and it's all based on one or two floor plans, either mm. mirrored or two floor plans mirrored back to back to back to back to right, back right. with the same colors and the same front yards. And it's, it's, really, it's really sad because <laughs> like, to, to think that you're spending that much money on the same house that your neighbor has. Right. That's interesting. I've, I've, I've never heard anyone unique. take that perspective on, you know, uh, like cul-de-sac developments or whatever. Um, well, cul-de-sacs are the best. I mean, at least now that I have a family, you don't like people driving through. Right. Well, it's interesting because from a town planning thing, I kind of like that. Um, but I mean, I, I now live on the end of a long dead end driveway. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I do appreciate that now that I have a family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to, to get the, the, um, from away view and that's what people will call you living here you're you're from away and like in unless like your grandparents were born here you'll always be from away so like even my kids have been born in Biddeford like in a house in Biddeford yeah. you know they'll still be they'll still not <laughs> really from well, here you know it's it's just uh it's There's just the main most thing most of the people I've met are not from Maine though so far yeah i mean it's uh people it, it's changing. Have you been down east at all or up the coast past Portland much? Or No, nope, never been past Portland. Oh, it's so beautiful when, like, the added the added beauty of getting into these little uh, fishing villages. That, super, I'm super excited. That are off the highway, you know, that there's no roads going through them. You have to go down up along. And back down. Yeah, you have to go <laughs> out of your way to get to them. It's, it's so beautiful. And just, it's like going back in time into, like, a... Norman Rockwell painting, you know, of yeah. these just little villages right on the coast with all these, you know, quaint old homes and then these just spotted islands out there off of it and all these yeah. lobster boats actually working, you know, it's a it's a working town, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. You just don't see a lot of photos of Maine when you live in California. You see a lot of photos of California and it's not a bad <laughs> thing. Like I love interesting. looking at my home state. Right, right. And I always thought California had a really good marketing effort because pretty much <laughs> yeah, everyone knows like do. the feel. They have the budget. Yeah, of of California, and it it lives up to it to a degree until you turn around from the coast and look at the traffic and and congestion that you have to live in being there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you know, like yeah, I spent L- some time. Los Angeles is just a behemoth. I mean, like every time we go nice. out there, I'm like, man, this would be nice to live here, but I'm I'm not realizing how difficult it would be to have to be stuck in that traffic and be there year round in that dense of a population that amount of people. yeah I, I mean i'm realizing just how how much it wears on you just coming out here it, it still feels like we're kind of on vacation right. just from the noise and the light pollution and the yeah. air pollution and <laughs> just a lot of those things that even living in ventura which is a much smaller small beach town yeah compared yeah. to santa monica and LA Beach, and Newport Beach, Orange County, San Diego, even it's Ventura is an awesome place to be. And it's, it's definitely found out people have found out and Ojai as well has yep. been found out like Ojai has just changed so much from when I, when I lived there as growing up, I grew up, you know, I grew up in Ventura, spent time in Ojai in high school. Ojai was just pickup trucks and 
horses and a little tiny downtown with a couple of dive bars and hmm. now it's it's icon 4x4 Broncos and Range Rovers oh, yeah. and like $160,000 Sprinter vans at least four you see four every time you yeah, drive yeah. up and down Ohio Avenue and it's just very very different it's just it's just an it's a getaway for LA yeah yeah. And so homes up there now cost almost more than beach homes in some cases because you get a little bit more land. And right. You, th- you think that you <laughs> might get like a hobby farm or like a chicken coop or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. And so you'll pay a fifty to 100000 more for that. Maybe. Right. It was amazing to me. I spent, I think, two weeks in Morocco, and it felt like California without the people. It was, it was very similar. I've been hearing similar. some stuff about Morocco, and that style, Morocco and those, both southern – southern spain mediterranean like mm-hmm. mallorcan style architecture yep. it kind of feels like that's the next evolution of farmhouse at least in southern california it's mm-hmm. going away from from borden batten farmhouse like joanna Gaines and yep. the traditional american farmhouse and now it's going towards like a stone gable hmm. with the deep inset windows and right. the, the, the you know the steel windows and um i'm actually working on a project right now that with the firm that I'm with that is a, a stone house that based on a Mallorcan oh, farmhouse. Cool. That's is that in Santa Barbara? Like a, or? That's in Ojai. Ojai, okay. Yeah, Ojai is a neat place to go. We go up there and let the kids play on the, that big playground there, kind of downtown. Park, and, yeah. And we'll go by that that cool bookstore, whatever that is. Bart's Books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like it's the, the whole open bookstore, air bookstore that's open air. Yeah. Is just, that's ridiculous. <laughs> You'd never do that here. <laughs> Especially but. with books. Yeah, yeah right? It's like there, it's they like do not want, they should not get wet. <laughs> but they don't get wet because it rains like three inches a year, I think. Right. So have you ever spent a full winter? Versus 300 inches, I think it was here. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, right. <laughs> no. Who knows? It's like Portland, Oregon. It's like 30 30 inches or We're something. definitely not as wet as, as like, the northwest. The northwest I mean, is just dreary. Oof, yeah. yeah. We were actually looking at southern Virginia because of its milder climate. Mm-hmm. That's where we were planning on going. Really? Up until a couple months before we left. So where in southern Virginia would you have gone? I grew up like in the Shenandoah Valley. Somewhere between Roanoke and Asheville. Like Asheville's, closer to Roanoke. Asheville's nice. Yeah, Roanoke. Actually, I've, I've driven by Roanoke quite a few times i've never just spent much time un- in it but it's kind it, of an unknown yeah it looks like it's in city. this really beautiful oh, it's valley beautiful. like with these mountains all around Close, it on all three sides yeah. yeah and in town there's a there's a mountain called mill mountain huh. that i rode i took my bike out on yeah when we were on our way and it was just wild it was just wilderness in yeah. the city it's cool huh it's a small town i mean it's ninety thousand people so no. it's it's got everything there's something about being on the coast, though. I mean, I love oh, mountains I'm and so stuff. I'm so happy to be on the coast, though, now that we didn't really... It just happened. Like, it was kind of serendipitous. We we switched. We were like, we're coast going to the coast. coast of Maine. <laughs> and it's just seeing the ocean is very comforting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I it's just, just nice knowing there is where the land ends. Yeah. And then you can kind of snuggle up against it and feel like there's the beautiful infinite and it's this unknown mystery right it's just it puts things in perspective you know yeah there's something about that that i don't quite i don't quite understand but something about being on larger bodies of water there's got to be some kind of connection that we're made of so much water that (laughs) interacting with that just kind of makes you feel home or something. well that horizon line like if you don't you kind of get it out in the plains of montana or wyoming where there's just almost an infinite horizon. Right. And the sky is so big. Um, the sky just takes over. And it's just, and then the ocean reflects the sky. And right. And so it's just, I don't know. We're kind of built, we're made to look up. I think that's what it is. And so when you're looking out at the ocean, it's reflecting the sky. And hmm. you're just kind of like in this trance of like blue on blue. Right. Something about blue. Yeah, I had a, another. I don't know why everything's blue. Um, that's a scientific thing. Well, yeah, the, there's but something it's beautiful. Blue is really beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I think it's one of my wife's favorite colors, and she's trying to get more of it into our house. <laughs> so, must be something there. Okay. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Anywho, uh, how are you looking forward to your first winter here in Maine? Like I said, I've only been in New England in the winter, oh, really? and yeah. it actually 
I had a, it, I really struggled to pass my first architect's registration exam, mm-hmm. and I think I failed like two or three times in a row. And then um, while working my, for myself, we took a three-month road trip, and a couple of weeks of that was spent in northern Vermont in the winter, mm. where my in-laws live, outside of Stowe, and they have a, ba- a, a basement, and I just locked myself in the basement for seven days and was reading and taking notes right. for eight hours, eight to ten hours a day for seven days straight and then I went and took my first test and I passed it and I was like yes I could just it just it took the time just need more basement and, time and it was just dreary it was terrible outside and so I was sometimes it's good to to have that focus you know because in California I almost felt guilty for not going outside yeah. every day well, like, it's that beautiful or if a week like goes down by or two weeks go by it's like taking this for granted and I could be like mountain biking, I could be surfing, I could be running, I could be, and you could do that every day. And it's, it kind of wears on you just knowing that you could do that and feeling like you have to take advantage of it because it's like this blessing that right. you have to take advantage of. And I think, I think other people feel that way too. It's like, if you're not like a semi pro something, cause everything's born out there, right? Like right. mountain biking, skateboarding, Long Beach, Santa Cruz, it's just... Someone had said, like, move out of New York. move, Experience New York, but move out before it makes you hard. And experience uh, California, Northern California, but move out before it makes you soft. Northern California? I don't know if they said it about Southern or Northern or just California in general, but basically, yeah. And that's interesting, like, the the, the marked difference between seasons that you get in a place like this, mm-hmm. like it's it's really, really marked. Like, all right, here's another year gone by. It's really grounding. Yeah, there's something about that that's interesting. Um, and I like so the contrast, different. whereas California is, is just generally just a consistent, same, nice weather, Wait. which is great, but I, I don't know that I'd prefer that all the time. Again, it wears on you because there's no way to mark the seasons or the years. If you yeah. didn't look at a clock, you wouldn't know that you're aging. <laughs> Days so are a little shorter. And there's a big, there's a big, uh, you know, struggle with aging, especially like around the Hollywood and the celebrity, like oh, forever yeah. young. And you can, you can feel like you're forever young in there. You could just be driving a new, a new vehicle every day and it's blue skies every day. It feels like you're living the same day over and over. Like, huh. and if it's, if you have a good life, then, you, it should never end, right? It's like yeah, there, it's there's definitely something young. I appreciate about living in a place like this, but being able to escape to a place like that for a brief amount of time and in, in the winter, it's it's really, it's it's great. Um, but I really enjoy the primary part of my life being in a more harsh environment to a degree. I don't I don't know, I don't know what it is or why I gravitate towards that. Yeah, it. I've thought about that a lot. I mean, I think a lot of guys think about like, what, how would I be or how could I survive in a certain environment? I mean, that's right. why the, the zombie shows you're, and movies. You're dropped are so on popular. an island and you're by yourself. Yeah, you're constantly maybe. thinking about what if everything hits the fan or what if I did have to, for some reason, survive out in the wilderness. And it's like in California, you don't have that feeling that you couldn't survive. But I think in a lot of ways, the California desert which is most of California, Southern mm-hmm. California, is a lot more harrowing than oh, yeah. the, all the waterways Supposedly, here. New England, and specifically Maine, is one of the safest places you could live in the U.S., as far as natural disaster type stuff. Okay. Aside from if that bit that. of, um, there's some over near off Portugal or something, there's some mountain <laughs> that if it lets go, it creates a tsunami that inundates us or something. I remember there was an mom. evacuation route. I just drove on to Drake's Island. Yep. Um, yep. And it's just, it always surprises me to see that evacuation yeah. route sign. And I think it's for tsunamis because it's always yeah. on the coastline. But I'm like, what? You're not going to have a tsunami. How are you and get a tsunami? We've had like one or two tsunamis in the past five or ten years, and it's like the yep. sea rose like two feet or something right. for a couple hours. Yeah, I remember my, my buddy sending me a video of – the harbor there in Ventura, and it's kind of like, you know, stuff <laughs> was just kind of moving to the left a little bit 
consistently yeah. for like a minute and then you know yeah, go like, back and we will never forget i think the tide changes in maine are probably a bigger tsunami oh yeah than california's tsunami the tides here can be can be crazy insane, yeah. especially if you go up towards the bay of fundy it's like yeah so yeah you gotta get <laughs> you gotta go down east and look into all those villages down no, east I'll go they're, to Bar Harbor they're this amazing I'll go to that that's the touristy Acadia. part you, well acadia yeah you, you have to check it off your list you know but there's there's so well, just that whole i don't know what else you say for that what is that island called or those mount islands? desert or mount desert, mount desert. Island, yeah. i don't know different people desert. call it different things. Mm. mount desert i don't it's like a snow cone in the desert winter. Yeah, but there's there's bunches of other yeah, towns Mount Desert Island. at the end of peninsulas that are just and hopefully I'll run into Eric and oh yeah, act like yeah, I don't know a, who he is. He's in Deer Isle area, I think. And we'll become best friends and yes, we'll there try, you we'll go. Sketch together and <laughs> sketch and go on walks, and <laughs> go on long hikes and think about our no, business just plan. Think up, think up a reason to go interview him. <laughs> Serious. Think up, think up a reason to go interview him that will be beneficial to him in some way. And, and He's down for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, especially if you're going up there. I mean, yeah. Maybe you just have to start a podcast. So <laughs> That's the answer to everything right now. Yeah. Yeah. Start a podcast. But it's, no, I, 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 when you mentioned the living in New York and then living in California thing, I, speaking of the YouTube generation, Casey Neistat, I've kind of followed him here and there just because mm -hmm. he's kind of engaging to watch. And yeah, he just oddly is. He moved yeah. to Los Angeles, like I think Santa Monica hmm. from New York City, which really? is, you know, a big move. And yeah. um, That's interesting. What was just, his reason for doing that? He wants, I think he's kind of semi-retired. Just try something different. And, and he chose L.A. and he might be doing some real estate stuff. I think there's... Hmm. But, you know, he, I think he talked about how just New York, it's just, you can't raise, you can't raise, I mean, you can raise a family yeah, there. But it's, woo. Yeah. So he's, he's got a, a kid that he wants to spend more time with. And yeah. Huh. So it's just, it's kind of a thing to move from New York to LA. They're kind of the big, the big cities and we they're, actually they're kind of have, black and white, which we is have, crazy. uh, so we have Banded Horn Brewing, or I think it's just called Banded now, which is a distillery brewery uh, here in Biddeford. And the people that started that moved here from Brooklyn. And then we have Time and Tide Coffee, which is right here on Maiden Street, which they make an incredible pistachio latte. Hmm. It's insanely good. Um, but they're just that. right down Main Street from the co work space. Okay. So if you just go down the street like you're going towards Saco. It's on the right down there, but super really cool interior too. Actually, I like it a lot. Time and Tad, it's a cool yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they came here from Brooklyn as well. Um, so yeah, people are getting out of New York and finding Biddeford for some reason. But there's there's huh. several really good uh, little re there's like little hole in the wall restaurants that are really good. And there's also some place called Elda, I think, if you're a meat eater, that's supposedly really good here in Biddeford as well. There's the Palace Diner, which got like a four star and bon appetit magazine or something like that oh, nice. it's it's a little like actual diner it says on the outside ladies invited it's that old that they had to say like women are welcome <laughs> yeah it's crazy nice. but it's it's That's full cool. on like little like silver diner inside and it's not like one of these fake ones it's the real thing it's huh. super cool it's right off main street you'll you'll find it if you go walking around but there's a lot of really cool little stuff if you know where to look uh, around Maine, just incredible beauty. And, no, I'm, and interesting I'm excited. Stuff. I'm really thankful that I landed here. It was, again, it was, I don't know. It's a good it place. Was, it was out of nowhere, kind of. I mean, we we have family. My wife's brother lives in York, Maine. Yep. And this, the area we landed, though, Wells, Kennebunk, Biddeford, Ogunquit. Yep. It seems like perfect fit. So of the, of the most affordable areas that you're going to find in southern maine bitterford would be one of them yeah and anything that's, that's needed but anything on this side of the coastal side of 95, 95. is automatically going to be a little yep it's more the same pricey, in california but yeah being on the west side of the 101 yeah the 101 the or 101. the 95 um it's just nicer you don't have to deal with it you don't have to get on you know you don't right. have to go past it or over it or under it you just can kind of live a different it just seems it feels like a little village right 
on the other side and then everyone else lives all the way up into the hills and it's interesting like there's this weird like south between Biddeford and Kenny Bunkport there's this basically like country forest right up to the ocean mm-hmm. you know and there's just endless just different Can't farms and stuff and yeah it's so beautiful great yeah. place to live Super not beautiful. everyone move here though please just a few just enough to raise the economy just enough to raise the economy well here i am bit of bird let's raise <laughs> single-handedly raise gonna bar. do it for us <laughs> Well, uh, thanks for coming in today. It was really cool to, uh, to meet you and to just hear about, uh, you know, your transition in life. And, uh, if you, if you need any introductions to people that I know that, that might help as you're, you know, finding your way here in Maine or whatever, just obviously let me know. Um, Sweet. but cool. cool to have uh, continual flow of people finding that uh, Maine is a pretty cool place to be. So, have, uh, How many people would you say that you've interviewed? On this podcast? Yeah, or have been... Oh, from away? From away, not out of towners. Oh, man. Uh, I bet you it's probably somewhere around 70% would be from away. Okay, that it, makes sense. It just kind of depends. Well, it's a small town. I mean, 20,000... Is a small town. I think if you, if I'm you talking can, statewide, state. Yeah, just very few pe- people from Biddeford, probably. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying. I think the the Biddeford area is kind of special, just because if you are looking for a smaller town, for whatever reason, if you right. have that ability as a family to be like, I want to my kids to grow up in a s- small town. Right. I think ten to twenty thousand is right. Is a a small town that has the things that a lot of people also want in, you know, 500 people, a thousand people. That's not a, most people wouldn't classify that as a town. If, right. If it just has like I a mean, post office. I mean, we've got a Home Depot. I know. That's crazy. It's great. <laughs> you can do so much with that. So. Right. Wow. 70%. Yeah. It, uh, it's, Do you know what podcast number this is? I have no idea. Oh, okay. You'd have to ask Tim. <laughs> I just basically, anyone who seems like they'd be a fun conversation say, hey, you should come in. We'll do a podcast. Nice. So. <laughs> Sweet. I'm glad to, be a, glad to be a part of it. Thank you so much for seeing me. Yeah, absolutely. Good and best you. of luck in your, your adventure here. Maybe I'll see yeah, you this is just in the, the water. Or This is like the very, very start of well, that's cool. my life, basically. Right. Like my, I, I totally forgot about, Everything no offense to anyone you. that, was part of my previous <laughs> life, but it's like a clean break. Life, life anew here in Maine. Yes, reborn, the phoenix. Nice. Arri- arises. Well, congratulations <laughs> on on finding one of one of the best states in the union. Definitely. So. No, I can. I think so far it's lived up to. It's yeah. It's blown blown me away. Definitely. Cool. It's it's home. It's home. All in, Hopefully I get one of those. Yeah, these are cool shirts. I got it from the place down here in uh, North Dam Mill, just in the entry. Do you know North Dam Mill here? So the last left you can take as you're going into Saco uh, will take you into basically The northernmost mill Yeah, those mill essentially. buildings. It's basically right there. Yeah. But as, you're, as you go down Main Street to go across the bridge to then go into Saco, um, you just, there's a left that you can take and you go into a parking lot and it's a mill complex that it was really the first mill here that really got renovated and turned into like shops and there's just so many young businesses and oh yeah the pepper mill yeah i mean we've got there's a huge textile factory making clothing like there's a cutting floor oh yeah that's so weird to see like i thought everything was made in no no we we hand do some stuff here it's awesome (laughs) that's part of it it's like wow yeah. There's actually like a farm across the street. Yeah. It's not like you have to drive an hour and a half out of LA to go to the Well the farm. the guy who built our house actually runs an, an organic farm in Kennybunk. Uh I'm blanking. I on heard it on the last podcast. Frink, Frinkle Frinkle Finkle, something. Frinkle Pod Finkle Finkle Pod Farm. Finkle no, or Wentworth. Frinkle, yeah. Finkle. I think it's Frinkle. Probably Finkle Pod. Finkel Pod, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Arundel, I'm, I'm checking out. I got to check that out. Arundel's yeah. a really nice place because it's kind of, you're not going to get the high prices of Kenny Bunkport, mm-hmm. but you're still going to be on this side of 95. So, yep. 
we'll good see. place to look into fingers crossed all right cool well uh we'll have you back in like a year and see how you're doing yeah definitely gotta check back in no it's good it's a good point in time kind of survey of a person right gavin can, part one gavin <laughs> yeah age 32 age 30. we'll check back in in your <laughs> jc year all right <laughs> cool. cool well thanks for coming in yeah Thank later you.